Now I'm preparing to work on my castle box. And the first thing I'm going to do is take my center find square with a scratch all, mark the center on each end of this piece of wood. A piece of wood is about two inches by two inches and maybe five inches long. So I'm just taking my scratch all and just making a small indentation, flipping it around, and I'll mark the other center. Now you're looking at my new workbench and the shoulder vise, and I've got a little fixture in there that has different configurations. So I've got this clamped in this fixture. Put a little indentation on this end, and we'll take that over to the lathe, and we'll get busy and do a little turning. Well, greetings once again. This is Sam in a very chilly Wyoming. 15 degrees below zero this morning, and uh, I think we're getting some of that frigid weather that has been... Uh, impacting the entire country lately. Anyway, I'm going to take one of the puzzle items from John Barclay's book, All Screwed Up. It's going to be a castle money box. And um, John Barclay is a friend I've never met. He really taught me thread chasing via email back and forth probably six, eight years ago. Anyway, I've done some of the puzzles in here and they're really cool. This is a very good book. Uh, it's got a nice list of woods at the front that uh, John chases. And sometimes it's a matter of what you have available. Anyway, I'm gonna highlight a couple different things today. One of those things is not gonna be thread chasing. I'm gonna do a threaded project, but I'm gonna just go through it and not worry too much about all the details. I wanna focus on the shape which is a little bit different. The design, the opening where the threads are going to be, won't be in the top, it'll be more towards the bottom. And then at the end, I'm going to finish this piece with Tom Ackley's wood buffing paste and abrasive paste. And I'll put a link up in the description. Now what I've done here is I've jumped forward into the video a little bit because I wanted to show you this abrasive paste from Tom Ackley. So I'm going to just, uh, Put a little finish on this, plus you're going to see my completed castle box. All right, I've got my box pretty much completed. I've finished the inside of the base, and I've finished the inside of the top. Threads are pretty good. Grain is lined up, and when I put a little bit of finish on here right now, you're going to see that grain alignment and how pretty this wood is. Now, this is far later in the video. I'm kind of going back to the future here, but I wanted to uh, introduce Tom Ackley's uh, wood buffing paste and abrasive paste right there. And I wanted to show you this a little bit earlier in the video. I didn't want you to wait 30 minutes, and this video is going to be fairly long. All right, I'm ready to apply Tom's uh, abrasive paste. I'll start with that and then finish up with the polishing paste. Now Tom recommends that you seal the wood with some shellac. And ironically, I usually do that anyway with just about everything I'm turning. So I've got a little bit of uh, my shellac mixture. The very bottom of that, I've got a little bit of uh, mineral oil. So that acts more as a lubricant. I'll shake that up and I'll Apply a liberal coat, and I think I'll do that with a lathe stationary. Now again, I'm using um, Burmese rosewood, and it's it's very pretty. The other area that I need to finish is this area up here. Now you notice I cut my castellations. I'll show you that later in the video. I'm still developing this process for making this little box. And I'm going to take a dry place on my, my paper towel and just kind of buff this up just a little bit. 
Now you'll notice my grain lines up very nicely. All right, so take a little bit of the wood sanding abrasive paste. And again, I will have a link in the uh, description down below. If you'd like to purchase some of this, Tom has a website, very simple website where you just click and buy it. And I think the price is really almost too low. Sorry, Tom, it's, it's a really good product. I've used it for more than a month in my shop. So I'm applying the abrasive paste and again, Gord Rock has another video making something and applying this finish. And he makes the comment that uh, it really takes out the very fine scratches from your previous grid of sandpaper. All right, put a little inside here. Now again, I'm going to take a dry paper towel with nothing on it. And at this point, Tom Ackley recommends taking all this excess uh, abrasive paste off there. So I'm going to just take take dry paper towel. I'm not sure if I can get in, in here too easily. Okay, that didn't work too bad. Keep your fingers away from there. And I'm going to keep looking at my paper towel and make sure all the excess is gone. And I think it's up to you if you want to put uh, more than one coat on there. I think that's fine. I think what I will do eventually is I'll take this over to my buffing station and do a little buffing with that. Now, here is another really nice product. This is the wood buffing paste. So when you purchase this, you get both products. And I'll let, uh, I'll let Tom talk about the price and the cost and all that. Sometimes I mess up there and I don't want to give you the wrong price. Anyway, I think this is awesome. And, and Tom is just trying to break in a little bit, make a, make a couple bucks, you know? And uh, I'm all for that kind of endeavor. He's worked really hard. He's made some sales, but uh, he wants to get this off the ground. So I'm going to turn my lathe on again, find a dry place on my paper towel. And what I've got here, this uh, buffing paste, makes a good um, medium for wet sanding. Very nice. Now again, this is really uh, a few clips from the end of the video. And I'm going to, of course, go forward again, and I'll show you how I make the, um, the castellations, and I cut those at the very end of the video. And I also take off the base. So there you go, Tom Ackley's wood abrasive paste and buffing paste. Check them out. The price is really, really very reasonable. Now let's move on. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to Refocus the camera and true up this blank. Okay, by the way, this is Burmese rosewood. Should be very pretty. Now the next thing I'm going to do is shape this a little bit and then uh, we'll kind of move on to parting this off on the bottom. This is going to be the top and this is going to be the, the, the base of it. So it's going to look a little bit like uh, the castle on a chess set. Okay, now I'm showing you a page out of John Barclay's book. 
This is the Castle Money Box that I'm going for. I may change the shape just a little bit. And at the very top of that you have castellations that uh, I have a hub cutter that I'll show you later on that I made because I've never really done anything like this before. So anyway, let me uh, change the camera angle and we shall proceed. All right, a little bit about the design of my castle money box. I'm gonna part this off right here. I think this is way too tall for what I'm doing. And up here at the top are gonna to be my castellations. Let me show you what that means. And I've got my uh, book right here, right there. So this area at the top with the, the grooves in there, that's the, the castellations. Let me do a little bit of work on this. I'm going to first part this off right here because I don't want that wood on there. Okay. I'm going to find a spindle gouge and do just a little bit of detailing on this. Now I'm just taking a square scraper and I'm going to just level this off to where I want it. Now you can see in the design of the original box that the threaded area was right at the top. And John cut a groove right in the top of that for a coin to fit in. And the secret was simply taking another coin and unscrewing this uh, part right here that fit down inside. And you couldn't even tell it was there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to designate an area down in here where my threads will be. Let me bring you up to speed. Now, that's going to fit right like that. This is the top of my box. This is the bottom. This is the threaded area. So I'm at a point where I want to hollow this out. Now I've got an old gouge reground with a very long wing on the left side. I've got a hole drill down to my final depth up here. So I'm going to just do a little bit of work with this gouge here. Hollow this out. Now I've got this part of my box hollowed out. Again, this is the top. And I'm going to mark this very precisely for the depth because I'm going to do something on the top and I don't want to make a hole in there. So I'm ready to chase some threads. And I'm going to level off this surface right at the very front of this. Make sure it's as parallel as possible.
So with my recess tool, I established that recess or stop gap. I've got a chamfer on the front of that. I'm not sure how this is going to take a thread, this um, Burmese rosewood. We shall see. Now I'm going to take a little bit of mineral oil and just lubricate this surface. Get my lathe up to thread chasing speed, which um, Three hundred and eighteen RPM. That's good. Tool rest is a little bit in the way, <clears throat> and that's the reason you have this tool rest at a forty or forty-five degree angle from your bedways, so you can uh, get in there with your thread chaser. Okay, and the most important tool I can find for thread chasing is my wife's toothbrush. No, I'm, that's not that's not right. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. I need to do just a little bit more thread chasing on there. I don't see a lot of crumbling or anything, so we'll do a little bit more chasing. Now once this groove is established on there, I can turn the lay speed down just a little bit. That makes it a little bit easier. And as I chase these threads, I'm actually pulling my my armrest tool back. I'm, I'm pulling those, I'm pulling that thread chaser into that groove. very happy with those. So Burmese Rosewood, I'll have to add that to my list. Now I'm going to take this out and put it in my base and do a little chasing on the male thread. Here's the top part of my project. Female threads. Now I use some of Axe um, friction polish and paste on the inside of that. I'll show you more about that later on when I finish the outside and you can see it better. I've got a couple lines drawn on here and I'm working on my male tenon. And I'm going to use a point tool to kind of sneak up on that line. Alright, I've done a little bit of preliminary work on my male tenon. And I need to establish a recess right here with my point tool. I'm sure there's a good chamfer on there. And what I ordinarily do when I'm sizing these up is I just hold that female threaded area on there. So I establish that, uh, oh I don't know, burn mark right there. It's really the diameter of my male thread. Now let me get my chaser. And I'm using a 16 TPI thread chaser. And what I do with my chasers is I color code them because I don't want to mix them up. Alright, now rest height, about a finger's width in there, and start at about a 45 degree angle. And I find that on the male thread, I need to uh, slow the speed down just a little bit because I have this shoulder that I'm going to butt up against when I'm chasing. So. 
very gently begin to establish that threaded groove in there and once I do I just start turning the corner and straightening up my handle and eventually it's going to be perpendicular to my bed waves. Okay, let's check and see if we're if we're close. Nope, we're not close. So I'm gonna take a little bit off the top of my threads. Go back to chasing speed. I'm about 250. So, all right. So, once I can do that, I really establish the level of my mail thread. Now I'm going to put a little bit of mineral oil on that. This is really threading quite nicely. I like that. This little bit of moisture is going to help lubricate and Okay, let's try these. All right, we're getting there. Now I still have a, quite a bit of a taper on my male thread and that's what I'm trying to take off right here. All right, now I promised I wouldn't turn this into a thread chasing video, but here's a fine point. If you're chasing the male thread and you start approaching that shoulder, if you lower your tool handle, you will lose contact with the cutting part of the tool. And then you won't strip those threads out. Again, back to about 260. Let's try it again. Now, that's threaded on there pretty well. And this is a good indication that uh, my threads are good. That's leveled up like that. Now, one thing I failed to do was mark my grain alignment. So let's take a look at this. Now I'm not sure if you can see it, but I've got my grain lined up in several places. Some, sometimes you can't see it very well. And I'm going to take a pencil and mark this right here. And maybe right here you can see that. That lines up very well. Anyway, let me tighten this up. So I need to go from here to here. That's not very far. That's, uh, that's going to be fairly easy to line that up. So take this part off. And ordinarily the way to do that is just take a little bit off this shoulder. And I mean a little bit. I don't want to take off too much.
other than that, my threads are are good. Okay, a little bit more. Now I'm trying to get that top part to screw on there a little bit farther so those mm. pencil lines <clears throat> match up. And there are several ways to do this. And here I am chasing a little bit more and taking a little bit more of a thread off that. The other way to do it is take a little bit of the, the peaks of the threads off with your point tool. And we'll see how we do here. I think I'm very close. There they are. They're lined up. Now, that's fairly tight. Okay. However, what I'm going to do now is work on this part of my project. And as I do that, those threads are going to tighten up a little bit more. Now, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I've also got a pencil line marked right here that shows my depth kind of go in the wrong direction. Ordinarily, that'd be, that'd be reversed. So now the next thing I'm going to do is hollow this area out right here. And this is where my castellations are going to be. Now, I've done a little bit of shaping on the upper part of my, my box, and now I'm going to hollow out this area right in here. And I have to be careful not to go any further than that line. And I've got a little... Uh, Actually, it's a little bowl gouge that I'm going to work on this. Now you'll also see this area right in here. I've taken a parting tool and just gone down a little bit to uh, establish the thickness of this area right in here. All right, now one of the next things I need to do is cut the grooves in here, those castellations. But before I do that, I want to finish this. Got it sanded inside this area here and in the outside top of my box. And I'm going to go to Tom's friction polish paste. Now one of the things that Tom actually suggests doing before we apply the the paste and the friction polish is seal the wood, which I think is a great idea. It doesn't hurt. It'll establish a nice base for his abrasive paste, which we will use first. So here it is wood sanding abrasive paste. Beeswax, mineral oil, I'm not sure what else is in there. But it's a good abrasive um, product. I'm going to wipe a little bit on there. <clears throat> One reason I'm doing this video is I'm going to establish a demonstration where I would like to use this little box as a subject. I'm going to put a little bit more paste on there and go over that one more time. Kind of buff that off a little bit. And Tom suggests buffing that until you don't get any more on your paper towel. Okay, that seems adequate. I'm going to speed up the lathe and just buff this and I can take this over to my 
buffing wheel later, I think that will do a nice job. Okay. So now I'm going to put on a little bit of wood buffing paste. There it is. Now Gord Rock also has a video highlighting this product. And uh, anyway, he turns a little bowl, I think. We'll put that uh, paste on there, rub it in. Well, I think that did a really, really nice job. That's a beautiful finish. All right, nice two-part finish. I wouldn't say this is real glossy, but it's got a nice uh, subtle sheen to it. So the next part is going to be to cut my castellations and I felt it was necessary to finish this area before I did that. Okay, I've done a little bit of work off camera here. I made sure my grain lined up very well and it does. I've got three marks right here. I'm not sure if you can see those. What I've done is I've taken a pair of dividers and I've just kind of uh, eyeballed this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the, the lines which sort of represent stone. This is a castle, so it's made out of stone. I'm going to make these lines with my point tool. So I think it might be a good idea to just fill in these marks with a line that goes all the way around. I'm going to just take my point tool I'm going to just take some fine sandpaper and sand that now I had previously sanded this entire area down here to a thousand grit. And I think maybe in the future what I might do is take my burner and do some uh, lines horizontal that will look more like stone. Okay, now I've taken a beading tool and made a little tiny bead right there. There's another bead right here. Now I'm ready to cut my castellations. And let me show you how I do that. All right, now I am ready to cut my castellations on my castle box. I got those all marked out. And let me show you what I'm going to cut these with. I've kind of played around a little bit with a couple different options. What I have here is just a gear. And didn't look quite like that when I bought it. But I've got that chucked up into a tenon created in a piece of wood. And then I'm going to uh, put a little bit of pressure from my tailstock onto this PVC pipe. It's just a little bit of PVC pipe. And that works pretty good. I've done, I've done some test pieces. There's one right here. And it cuts okay. I, I sharpened that. I think the steel is fairly hard. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn my lathe on and hope for the best. And I'm probably turning seven or 800 RPM. All right, now once you've seen three or four seconds of this grinding, you've seen pretty much all there is to see. So I'm speeding this up. Now, I do have another option in mind 
for cutting these castellations and uh, maybe I'll show you that in an upcoming video. All right, well, it's starting to look a little bit more like a castle. I've got a little bit of cleanup on my cuts right here. There's the inside. And I think I can put this back on my lathe and just turn those bits of wood away and clean that up with some sandpaper and maybe a file. And I'll show you that. All right, I've got my box pretty much completed. I've finished the inside of the base and I've finished the inside of the top. Threads are pretty good. Grain is lined up and when I put a little bit of finish on here right now, you're gonna see that grain alignment and how pretty this wood is. Now at about two minutes and 40 seconds into the beginning of the video, I show how I finished my castle box. So you can go back and look at that. Now I'm going to move on to the base. Now I've got the bottom of my box or the base of my box chucked up into a screw chuck made out of black wood. And I'm just uh, doing a little bit of sanding on the very bottom of my piece. And I won't go into great detail on this. I'll speed some of that up and sand it and apply a finish and I will be done with my box and I'll show you the finished uh, box in just a little bit. And I'll just kind of buff it up a little bit with my steel wool. Okay, now I'm applying a little bit of uh, Axe abrasive paste. Turn my lathe speed up a little bit. I'm going to use a little bit of the wood buffing paste. Something else I used this buffing paste for was the threads. I like to lubricate my threads as I'm chasing and that worked really well. It's got a nice uh, consistency or viscosity. There we go. Let me readjust my camera and I'll show you my finished box. So I have this on a, a threaded screw chuck. A little bit of black wood there so that threaded in there and I finished the base. Well I'm very happy with my castle box and uh, thank you for tuning in. I'll talk to you next time. Yeah, not bad.